Welcome to Little Explorers at the Reach Museum. My name is Miss Pauline, and we're sorry that we can't see you in person here at the Reach, but we're glad that you can watch this video and explore with us. So, Miss Andrea is gonna help us sing our welcome song. Okay, welcome friends. It's time to sing our welcome song. And so you're going to need all your fingers, and you're going to need your voice. And the first thing we are going to do is we're going to say hello. So you're going to take your hand, like you're waving hello, except you're going to put it up by your forehead, you're going to say hello. You want to try it? Hello. And then you're going to say hello to your friends. So you need your friends. So you have your two pointer fingers right here. These are your friends. And the friends are going to give each other a hug in one direction, and then you're going to in another direction. So we're saying hello friends. And we're going to do that three times and then the next words are it's time. So you're going to touch where you would wear your watch. It's time to say hello. Are you ready? Let's sing it together. All right, get your hand up. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Okay, now we're going to do it one more time, but this time we're going to say hello to what we're learning about today, and that is plants. So the sign for plants, you're going to need one hand, you're going to put it up like this in front of you, and then with the other hand, you're going to make a duck. Duckbill, quack, quack. But this is gonna be a plant and it's gonna be growing out of the ground. So when we say plant, you're gonna make it go like this. One, two, plant. Got it? Okay. Hello, plants. Hello, plants. Hello, plants. It's time to say, Hello. So let's explore this word, sprout, S-P-R-O-U-T. What does that word mean? Well, it means to start growing, but it also means a young plant or something that reminds you of a young plant, like a young person. like your body has a head, some arms and legs, a heart inside, and a belly button. Each part has a job to do or a function, and that's the same with plants. So let me show you this plant that has lots of different parts. First of all, this is called a crane's bill geranium, and let's see what kind of parts it has. Here we have the roots. The roots are good for keeping it in place and also for sucking up water from the soil. See how it's got lots of little hairy parts. And it's kind of dirty because I just pulled it up out of the soil. Next we find the stem. This one doesn't have much of a stem. All the leaves kind of come out from one, but I'll bring this other one over. This one definitely has a stem. That helps hold it up straight and help the leaves to reach up. So, here's the leaves. This one right here has a lot of little leaflets on it. And the important thing is that they're all green because the green color helps them get sunlight and turn it into food so they can grow. How about flowers? Here's some flowers about to bloom Let's see, I don't know if I have any that are open. They're gonna be pretty little purple flowers. Flowers are there to attract pollinators, like bees or butterflies, so that they can come and start to make seeds. And on this plant, we even have some fruits with seeds in them. This is why they call it cranes bill, that's one of the seeds right there. Looks like a bird's beak. So there you have it. 
stems, roots, leaves, flowers, fruits, and seeds. Okay friends, we just learned about the parts of a plant, so now we're going to put that all into a song. We're going to do some plant yoga at the same time. Are you ready? We are going to start underground. Do you remember what part of the plant is underground? It's the roots. So you're going to take your fingers and you're going to bend all the way down and you're going to tickle your toes with your fingers. And these are the roots. All right, then we're going to come up, stand up straight, hands to the sides, and this is your stem. Okay, so roots, stem, and then the stem gives a place for the leaves to go. So you're going to take your leaves and you're going to reach them towards the sun. And then there's your flower. Okay, so let's do those four things together. You ready? Roots, stem, leaves and flowers, leaves and flowers. So far so good? Okay, next is the fruit. So we're gonna pretend we're holding a big apple in our hands and we're gonna take a bite. Fruit. And then we're gonna take the seeds from that apple in both hands and we're gonna go like this, like we're sprinkling them on the ground and you're gonna stretch your hands out in front of you. Fruit. Seeds. Got it. Should we put it all together? Okay, this is just like head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Okay, but we're gonna start from the ground and we're gonna go up. You ready? Roots, stems, leaves, and flowers, leaves, and flowers. Roots, stems, leaves, and flowers, leaves, and flowers. Fruit and seeds, and that's all you need. Roots, stems, leaves and flowers, leaves and flowers. Great job! Now, a lot of seeds sprout without a person helping, but if you want to help a seed sprout, you have to give it the same things that the little boy did. So you need a place to put it in the ground with soil and some sun. You're gonna need a uh, room to grow. Gotta keep the weeds out of there. And you're gonna need water. And you're gonna need time and patience because did it take a while? It sure did. So do you wanna try it? First, you have to get your place ready. And you need soil. So in a place, you know, if it's a small seed, it only needs a little place, a little room to grow at first. So you can use any little container. I found these in the kitchen from yogurt or something. And you can also use a egg carton, right? And fill it with soil. If you're using a plastic container, you're gonna wanna make some holes in the bottom so that when you fill it with soil and then water it, the water has to be able to drain out if there's too much. So I used a nail and that's gotta be sharp and just poked through to make these holes. You should get an adult to help you with that. If it doesn't work to just push it, then use a hammer to get it through the plastic. If you get at least three holes in there, that should be good. Now, where do you get the soil? Your family might have some soil in a bag, a bag of potting soil, but if you don't, no worries. You can just find some soil outside and try to use that. So we've got our soil, we've got a place to grow. It's gonna have enough room for that a seed needs. It needs water, that's right. So you can pour water in the bottom Carefully fill that tray. With seeds, you're gonna wanna make sure you don't splash too much water on there. So you can also use a spray bottle. And just spray it gently to get, get it nice and moist. I like to do that before I put the seeds in so I don't blast the seeds away off the top of the soil if they're little. Now, 
You're gonna want them to stay moist for a long time while you're waiting for them to sprout and while they're first growing. So a plastic container can help. I used this one from Salad and it fits over the egg carton pretty nicely. Or I could put these inside the mini greenhouse and that'll help make sure it doesn't dry out. And this one over here I started a few weeks ago and I used a cupcake container. Do you see how there's water on the inside of the cover? That's because when it gets warm in the sun, the water starts to evaporate into the air. And then this plastic cover will make sure it stays in. So I'm gonna put that right back on. Next, you're gonna need sunlight. So once you've got your seeds planted in there, find a place to set them where they're gonna get some sunshine and gotta keep an eye on it every day. All right, the sun will help wake up the seeds and keep them warm. Now we need some seeds. Where are you gonna find seeds? Well, your family can help you with this. You might be able to find some in the kitchen. For instance, I looked in my refrigerator and I found an apple. Have you ever seen seeds inside an apple? Let's see where they are. Ooh, there they are. So each one of those could grow an apple tree. I also looked in the fridge and found some peas. If you put these up, guess what you find? There's the seeds. You can even find them in green beans. These are cooked, so they might not grow, but you can always try and experiment. Your family might also have some seeds in a packet that they bought. Got lentils here, zinnia flowers, spinach. And if you don't have any of those seeds, well, we can find some outside. So let me show you how you can find some seeds outside in the garden. So if you want to find some seeds, a good thing to do is look outside and find the plants that were growing last year and are now have some dead parts on them. And you might be able to find some seeds. Let's go see what we can find. Oh look, there's some seeds in the bird feeder. I put some sunflower seeds and millet seeds in there for the birds. But this plant right here looks like it's got some berries. And if we were to open up one of those berries, because that's the fruit, look at that, there's a big seed inside. This is not a berry that's good for people to eat, but I think some of the birds probably like to eat it. In our garden, I like to leave the dead plants over the winter because the seeds can feed the birds and mice and even some insects. There might even be insects that live on the dead plants over the winter. So here's a sunflower from last year and this is where the blossoms were. Let's see if we can find any seeds. If we kind of crunch it up, oh it fell apart into my hand. And look, there's lots of seeds in there. Now during the winter, I've seen some finches come and eat those, but whatever's left, we can take and plant in the ground and grow new sunflowers this year. Now let's plant our seeds. If your seeds are super tiny, smaller than these spinach seeds, all you have to do is just sprinkle them on top of the soil and then spray them carefully so they don't get blown away. If the seeds are bigger, like these spinach seeds, you can still lay them on top of the soil, give them each their own little space, and then use a pencil to push them in just a little bit. How deep? Well, it depends on the size of the seed. If you have a seed packet, it'll tell you how deep to put them in and you might want to use a ruler. 
to measure the tip of your pencil. For instance, if it says to use, to push them in a half an inch, then you can just look right here, put the tip of the pencil at the zero and measure a half an inch. That would go that deep. So then you know to push the seeds in up to that spot. So check the package. And if you're not sure, you can always do experiments, put some of them deeper and some of them shallower and see how they grow. Here are some seeds that I started a couple of weeks ago. These took a while to, to start sprouting. These are lupin. And I'll show you a picture of what they're gonna look like when they get bigger. Here's a picture from a book that shows lupin flowers. So later this year, they'll bloom into these tall, beautiful flowers. But for now, look how small they are. You can see three together here. I'm gonna need to spread those out and give them some more space. I wanna also show you that I had to label them because you might not remember what you put in each pot. So make a label with some tape and a marker on the side. This one is starting to fade. I better redo it. It says lupin. And that way you won't forget. So inside, this is what the sprout looks like. This is a pea sprout. Here's where the seed was. That's the seed coat that split open. And then the baby plant inside started growing out. One part grew down into the soil. That's the root. Other part grew up towards the sun. That's the shoot. And look, this one's got leaves on it. We are in the Reach Garden because it's time to sprout our garden. We're going to start with potatoes. Potatoes are easiest to sprout from, not from seeds, but from an actual potato. You can buy seed potatoes at the garden center or you can use some from your kitchen. If you look closely at the potato, you'll see that there are spots all over it. Each one of those is called an eye, just like your eyes and each one of those can become a sprout and grow into a new plant. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut this potato into pieces and each piece will have at least one eye on it. And then we'll put that down into the ground. I like to put it so that the sprout part, the eye is facing up. We're gonna put it kind of deep in the ground and then we'll cover it up. All right, there's our potatoes. All right, we're also gonna plant some onions. You can start onions from seeds like these. They're pretty small, but another option is to get some sprouts that have already started. I got these from the, the garden store. And these are Walla Walla Sweet Onions. I'm gonna take a bunch of them. And then we have to separate each of the plants and give them enough room to grow. I'm just gonna dig down with my hands a few inches, cause look how long that root is and put it in the ground so that the green part is above the ground and the roots are underground. We'll make sure the soil holds it upright. I'm gonna give them some space in between because these are gonna grow to be pretty big round onions. There we go. Now we're going to plant asparagus. These were planted two years ago. You can't pick them the first year. It takes a couple years before they're ready. But you can see last year's plant here. Now time that we can pull those off and get rid of them. And the new shoot ready to be picked. Asparagus has grown from crowns. 
this is what the crown looks like. Basically, it's a sprout that someone started at the garden center, and now it's just waiting for the right conditions so it can start growing. These are the roots, and these will be the shoots. So, you wanna dig a hole about five or six inches deep, and put this down in there and spread those roots out a little bit. And the great thing is that the plant knows automatically which way is up and which way is down. So even if you put it upside down, the roots will still grow down and the shoots will still grow up. I'm gonna help it out by putting it just like that. And I'll just make sure it's covered with some soil. Not all the way, but a couple inches. And then once it starts to grow some more, I'll add some more soil on top of it. There's our asparagus. Watching Little Explorers at the Reach Museum. I hope you can try sprouting some seeds this spring, or at least going outside to see the plants that are sprouting. Watch them every day to see how they're changing. How are you like a sprout? Do adults tell you ever that you're growing really quickly? They notice you changing as you learn new things every day. Do you need the same things that a sprout needs? Let's think. They need water. Do you need water? Definitely. They need a place to grow. Of course, you need a place to grow too. They need sun. Do you need sun? Not in the same way. The sun is the plant's food, but we eat people food instead of sun. In fact, most of the people food is made of plants. Well, thanks for joining us. There are some activities that you can see on our website and social media that you can see there and you can print them out. Um, but please consider when you're on our website making a donation. Just click on the donate tab at the top of our web page and keep supporting the Reach Museum. Keep exploring. See you next time. Thank you.